Okay, the goal of this really quick tutorial is to show you how to build a prediction uh, model uh, using SPSS. So the objective here is we're going to use some available data that we have to predict whether or not someone churns. So this is our uh, churn telecom subset data that we've been using in class and a small set of the data you've been using for project one. The goal is I, I want to build a logistic regression model that predicts churn using this data, but then I want to test and validate uh, my predictions on a data set that doesn't actually have this churn information. So I'll have the same variables, but I don't actually know if someone churns. So in the real business world, what this is analogous to is you have a data set, like a historical data set that actually has all the information, including the dependent variable, whether or not someone churns or, or whatever the dependent variable of, of interest is. But you actually want to use the results of your uh, model to make a prediction about the future. So you could imagine we might have information about someone's overage minutes, uh, their roaming calls, the number of customer care calls, their credit rating, and whether or not they're near their one year anniversary as a customer. But we haven't observed yet in the future if they've actually churned or not churned. So we'd like to predict based on the model um, that we originally created whether or not this person, uh, the probability that they'll churn. So, okay. Let's see how we do that. So let's go ahead and go to Analyze, go to Regression, go to oops, sorry, Binary Logistic. So we're going to predict our model here. So we have our churn predictor. And then for simplicity here, I'm going to just throw in uh, these three variables. I'll bring in a credit rating and customer. And now we know that since these are, we're going to treat these as categorical. We have to click on the categorical option, bring those into the model. Leave all the contrasts the same. Uh, we're not getting into the details of actually modeling logistic regression right now. We're just showing how to do this. So let's go to save. And the important thing that we're going to look at here is this part where it says export model information to XML file. So I would like to create a file. And this file is going to contain all the knowledge about the parameter estimates of um, and how to score um, new data in the future. So I'll go to I'm going to save this somewhere. On my desktop, oh, I already have one here, Logistics Scoring Model Save. Uh, but I'll, I'm going to write over this. You should give it your own name. Notice it's an XML file. We're going to be using this later. Save. Okay, I'll go ahead and replace that. Okay, so include the covariance matrix. We're good. Go ahead and continue. Yep, go ahead and replace that. I already said so. All right, so we have our, our model selected here. Now, what we could do here is hit Paste. And I just want to draw your attention to this particular piece of syntax, the out file. That's what's interesting to us. When we run this model, we'll actually create a new file, an XML file. So let's go ahead and run this. Run our selection. We get some output. Stuff happens. If we look at our prediction accuracy, we predict 59.3% of the cases right compared to the baseline of 50.2. So our model does have some predictive accuracy. <laughs> On the test sample at least. And we save some values. This isn't really what interests us. What really interests us is if we test this on some new data. So I'm going to go to File. I have some recently used data here. And bring this up. OK. So now to illustrate the point here, I'm opening this data set and I'm going to clear out all my variables, including my dependent variable. So notice I don't have my DV anymore. I just have my predictors. I just have my predictors. And then to sort of illustrate that this works on a slightly different data set, I'm going to completely arbitrarily, for no, for no reason other than I want to show that this will work on a slightly different data set, I'm going to delete a bunch of my records. Normally, you would not delete your records when you're doing the model. So what we're imagining we're looking at here, we're looking, we're imagining we're looking at new customers in the future that we don't know if they're going to turn or not. That's why we don't have the dependent variable. We do have information about them, though. So let's go ahead and apply our old model, the parameter estimates, to this new data and see how well it does. So we go to, sorry, um, utilities. We're going to go to something called the scoring wizard. And... Now, typically, you have to browse to where you save that XML file. So in this case, on my desktop, I save something called the Logistics Scoring Model Save, and I'll select this. Okay, cool. Gives you some details. 
clearly it knows what our dependent variable is called. It knows what our predictors are called. It's very, very important that the exact same variable names for our predictors are in both our training data set that we had previously and now this test and validation data set that we're using here. Let's go to next. And now SPSS is kind of smart. It knows that it should match up these variables name for name. If there's a slight difference in the naming, you might have to manually do some of this adjusting. Finally, these are the four things that's going to uh, spit out for us new columns of data. It's going to have the predicted value, so churn or not churn, the confidence in that prediction, uh, the probability of the predicted category, so if it predicts a zero, not churn, is it 51% accurate or 51% confident, or if it predicts someone's going to churn, is it 60% confident? I think an easier way to interpret that for me at least is the probability of the selected category, so a probability of being in a one. So in other words, what's the probability of any person churning? Some people are going to be near zero, some people near 100, and some people around 50%. We have an active data set here. I've told to score the active data set. You can always paste this syntax into the syntax editor. It'll look quite different from the logistic regression syntax you created earlier. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and create that so we can see what it looks like. Go to my syntax. So here's our scoring model here. See where it says model handle. So it's grabbing the XML file. It's the second line. It's telling us how to handle missing data here. And now it's telling us how to compute this information uh, based on the model. And it's going to create some of our new variables. So I'm going to go ahead and run the selection. Good. Stuff happened. Let's take a look at that stuff that happened. I'm going to slightly remove this sheet a little bit. Okay. So here we go. Now, again, we don't have a dependent variable um, in this data set. So we have a prediction. Now it's just guessing based on the model whether someone's going to churn or not churn. We have our confidence in our prediction. So if we sort this by descending, we have some people that were very confident that are going to churn. We have a bunch of people that were moderately confident are not going to churn. And of course, our lowest confidence is 50 percenter or some number slightly, ever so slightly above 50%. In other words, it's a coin toss for some of these people that were poor at predicting. And then let's take a look at the predicted probability here. This is saying there's a 70% chance this person won't churn. This is saying there's a 60% chance they will churn. And then I think an easier way to look at it is the selected probability. We selected one, meaning so what's the chance that this person is actually a one? Well, in this case, since we predicted this person's a one, we get there's a 94% chance there predicted probability there is, so that matches 94%. But this person we predicted that's a zero, there's only a 27% chance that they in fact are a one. In other words, the inverse of the uh, predicted or 100 minus the 73% uh, predicted probability. Okay, so what you've just done there is you have actually taken original old data, built a model that you are hopefully were satisfied with saved the parameters and all the other estimates of that model and applied it to a brand new data set. Now you could take this brand new data set uh, that you haven't seen uh, the customers actually churn or not churn yet and you could take corrective action. This is how you make a marketing business decision. Based on these people that we think are likely to churn, we could do interventions, um, discounts, customer service calls, uh, try to find other reasons that might um, in encourage them to not churn. And then what we'd eventually do in looking far into the future these are our predicted churns. Eventually, we'll actually find out whether they churn or not. We'll actually have a dependent variable. So we would populate this database with the actual zeros and ones, the real zeros and ones that we see in the future when they happen. And then we would compare, did our predictions actually match up to the new future? We can't always rely on old uh, predictions to guarantee to predict new consumer behavior in the future. So we always like to keep checking and validating if our predictions are still accurate. Because if not, we need to remodel and modify our data set. Okay? So that's a quick introduction into how we actually can save a predictive model and apply it to data that it hasn't seen before.